live from the Dignity Health Studios in downtown Bakersfield, California. Welcome into Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. Corey Costello with you. Thanks so much for joining us here live on Bakersfield.com or on demand at GoRunners.com. Thanks so much. as we got, a, we got a good show today. We have a different show today. We're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to just completely turn this thing upside down. Normally at this point of the show, we're going into highlights and news and all that stuff. We will get to that at the end of today's program because we got a lot of things happening uh, in the uh, towards the end of the show along with the highlights and news. We'll have uh, also Brooklyn Hinkins going to join us from CESUB Women's Basketball. The runners are 4-1 and one to start the year. Just coming off a huge victory over Fresno State, so we will uh, we will chat with her coming up uh, in the uh, next to last segment of the program. And, uh, of course, we'll get those highlights from uh, the volleyball selection show as they found out they're going to go play number one seed Stanford. Also, uh, men's basketball highlights against South Dakota and the women's basketball win over uh, Fresno State. All that stuff and scores coming your way. But today on the program, we've got the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund concert coming up. Uh, this is going to be on December the 11th at the Fox Theater. Easton Corbin is the headliner. These gentlemen right here, local group Truxton Mile, are going to be opening for him. We have Ryan and we have Taylor. Two of the, what, three? How many people? Yes, four, three. It just, it's hard to see sometimes. I got different pictures with different groups. but uh, well, We got five guys usually on stage. But five like on three stage. Three guys are the core of the band. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, guys, uh, welcome, welcome to the program. And uh, before we get to some of the stuff, why don't you uh, I want you to talk into those mics there. We'll uh, want to tell folks a little bit about yourselves, first of all. Um, now, you're opening for Easton Corbin on uh, on December the 11th at the Fox Theater, and that benefits the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Uh, right. Pretty big opportunity for a band like yourselves. Talk about how this all kind of came about. Uh, well, uh, we've been around Bakersfield for a while, met a couple people, uh, and um, we were doing a thing for Taft at uh, Oil Dorado. Uh-huh. It, it's a big sure. celebration every, uh, five, what, five years? Five years. Anyway, we were talking to the guy that was putting that on, kind of doing the promoting there, and he said, well, I happen to have another thing. So. <laughs> and, and we know him kind of well. And, nice. Uh, so, yeah, we hopped right in. And yeah, so here you are. Now, um, get, give me your thoughts about this opportunity to open. I mean, this is a, an artist who was a you know, uh, CMA Artist of the Year at one point, New Artist of the Year. So you guys get a chance to kind of open up for, uh, for an established uh, you know, country music act. So give me your thoughts on East, that. Easton's a great, uh, he's a great artist. He's kind of got that traditional country vibe to him. Sounds a lot like George Strait. So, um, you know, we're really excited about that and to kind of get the opportunity to play uh, and open up the concert for him and benefit a great cause, you know, with CSUB doing yeah. a fundraiser. But also, it, it marks our um, our debut at Fox Theater. In nice. Field, so, yeah, um, that, that's also something that's really cool to kind of check off the the local bucket list <laughs> for us, you know, because we we've wanted to play there for a long time. Yeah. So, and this, this is really cool to do in this fashion. We're really excited about it. And, and you you guys have played. Let's say you've done the you've done uh, the Crystal Palace. You've played. Obviously, you played Taft coming from there. So, uh, what what? How many more? On the Bakersfield bucket list, are there besides the Fox Theater? You know what? There's uh, we got to do something at the the Bright House. Okay, you know, the amphitheater. We do yeah. That. yeah. Um, and trouts. then yeah, trouts. trouts. <laughs> we always want to play trouts. We've always wanted to. So we'll we, we we'll get there eventually. Again, I mean, we we just you know haven't got around to it. No, that's yet. awesome. As a matter of fact, I uh, last year we uh, when we had this concert in Winona was the act. Um, you know, I got a chance to to go on stage a little bit, and I, th- that Fox Theater is. I mean. It's almost, it's not, it's, it's, they say majestic. It is. You're on stage and you're like, wow, this, the whole place just kind of, I don't know, this, the, the way the building is and, and the view on stage is, uh, is absolutely awesome. I remember seeing, I think my first like rock concert was at the Fox Theater. It was Collective Soul. <laughs> <laughs> and I told the story on stage that when they got into sh- the, the part on Shine, when they started running around the stage, that is a wooden stage. Well, I think they fixed it a little bit, but back in the day, it was just hardwood. And it was really old and slick. Well, dude's got his mic stand, and he's running around, and he goes to cut and just completely just face plants, microphone. It was awesome. It was, oh, <laughs> it was a memorable. We've had, we've had those. We've fallen on stage. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Trucks to Mile here in studio, Ryan, and, uh, and, and getting ready for what is going to be a great show. Uh, Ryan and Taylor here. And uh, first of all, you talk a little bit about – 
uh, Easton Corbin style of music. What? Uh, how does it kind of fit with what you guys? You guys kind of fall into that what they're calling almost Americana now, right? That's that the sort of genre they slip you into. Well, you know, a, a couple years ago it would just be flat out country, but um, yeah. you know, it, styles change in, in country music. So I guess you could call us country Americana, country rock, whatever yeah. you want to do. It's just a different twist on country. It's like every song. Well, let, here's what I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of the Americana genre because it is like every song is built for a road trip for the most part. <laughs> right, <laughs> I mean, right? Right. right yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like a soundtrack. Every song's a soundtrack to uh-huh. a to a, to a movie uh, and a road trip. So, you really can't uh, you really can't can't beat it. And um, you know, th- you, you talked about kind of the exposure you got in Taft where where you sort of originated yeah. um, to get this gig. And last year we had a local act, uh, Whitney Wattenbarger, who you yeah. guys know well, you've oh, played yeah. with. Uh, she opened for Winona. And do you get more of these opportunities at w- given Bakersfield's place in the music scene i mean do you guys kind of have more of these doors sort of open up to you because of what this town's reputation and the people who know people in this town i think we get a lot more dedicated fans and that's just country music in general the fans the fan base within country music they're really dedicated and they're really loyal so being uh, a country band in baker so they're you know americana but considered country um i i think we have uh, a, a lot more opportunities here you know because bakersfield is considered an essentially nashville west yeah so we have a lot of a lot of opportunities, and we went to Nashville for a week one time and played a lot of open mic nights. And um, being from Bakersfield, they they really view that as something that's it's a definitely it's a, it's a plus. Yeah. And they, they they you get a little bit more respect that way, so which is kind of cool. So um, yeah, definitely being from Bakersfield and uh, being established out of here, it, we kind of have an advantage in um, playing country music here also because of what Bakersfield is. And, and you guys have uh, a lot of ties in Kern County, uh, Taft especially. You've played there a couple times. You just recently had a sort of back to the nest show. How did mm-hmm. that How did that, that go? Great. That was great. Yeah, we, we put a big stage up in front of the Taft Fox Theater nice. and uh, about 1,300 people showed up on one little block. <laughs> it was packed. Yeah, was Which is the entire city of Taft. By yeah. The way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There are some Bakersfieldians there too. <laughs> well, nice. Hey, well, uh, we're going to get to, to more about your band and stuff as we continue on the show, but y- you have guitars, uh, you-, you have mics set up. Why don't we play a song? Wh- All right, that works. What, 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 what do we got here first? Um, right. We're going to play a song called You're Right. It's an original. Yeah. Uh, it was one of our first songs that we actually cut a while back, and um, we kind of, you know, work on it as we go. We kind of, there's some stuff that we want to try on it, but um, it, it's, it's a great song that Ryan wrote. Um, uh, it, that one thing that you don't want to tell tell your significant other. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the one thing you don't want to admit to a girl, more uh, or less. Awesome. All right, Chuck Samal, here you go. All right, go ahead. One, two, three. Girl, you're like a ship that's going down. And I'm doing what I can so I won't drown. And you know I'd give up everything to keep you safe and sound But girl, you're like a ship that's going down Lord knows I've done all I can to keep you home tonight But I guess you found some place to lay your head So I just turn out the light But when he's gone, you think of home Cause you need a place to cry I'm sorry I'm not there to say goodnight Cause now I see you your way, baby Now I know you're right You're right To be crying You're right you said that we were all wrong You're right When you said I was leaving And you're right You're right Baby, I'm long gone So I jumped on that fast train leaving town and I'm heading someplace where I won't be found Well, I couldn't keep that wild angel with me on the ground So I jumped on that fast train leaving town If I'd have known the 
day that we first met that it all turned out this way. I'd have looked right through that pretty smile. You watched me walk away. If you're trying to keep me here, girl, don't waste your time. There's some things in this life you just can't fight. Now you're gonna see in my wee baby, you're gonna know you're right. Oh. said that we were all wrong, you're right, when you said I was leaving, and you're right, you're right, baby I'm long gone, Well done, well Thank done, gentlemen. Much. As uh, Truxton Mile, a bit of a sneak peek of the opening act for uh, Easton Corbin. Uh, and, I mean, just imagine what, what you guys sound like plugged in, right? The full band. <laughs> the full, full band. band. Easier, yeah. This is awesome, but the full band is going to be there on December the 11th uh, at the Fox Theater. Tickets available at valleyticks.com. You guys got a few minutes? Stick around, do, yeah. do another yeah, song. Yeah, Maybe talk a little more about, yeah, yeah. about music. All right, sounds good. When we come back, uh, more with Trucks and Mile. And also, still to come on the show, Brooke Hinkins joins us, CESB Women's Basketball, and much more. Stick around. Special edition of Roadrunner Rundown. We'll be back. Welcome everyone, Nissan of Bakersfield has everything for the perfect car buying experience. Like our beautiful showroom, full of the most popular Nissan models for you to explore. And our fully stocked parts and service department from everything from genuine Nissan accessories to factory trained service technicians to keep your car running its best. Plus, our massive inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles means you're guaranteed to find the right one for you. Nissan of Bakersfield is where you should buy your next car. This is dignity, the smile given to a sick child, the steps taken to find a cure, future leaders learning to make a difference, humanitarians who give from the heart, and a love that comes from above. At Mercy and Memorial Hospitals, dignity is more than just a word. It's who we are. Join us for the 32nd annual Bakersfield Christmas Parade live on Bakersfield.com. See the bands, floats, and of course, Santa Claus. See the sights and hear the sounds of this wonderful Bakersfield tradition that will be streamed worldwide for the first time on Bakersfield.com. So sit down, relax, and enjoy the 32nd annual Bakersfield Christmas Parade on Thursday, December 4th at 6 p.m. only on Bakersfield.com, your Kern County live streaming leader. Make the holidays brighter for disadvantaged and hospitalized children in Kern County. Join us Wednesday, December 3rd from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the Chips for Kids Toy Drive at the Bakersfield, Californian parking lot on the corner of H and 18th Streets in downtown Bakersfield. Donate unwrapped toys for ages 0 to 16. No time to shop? Cash donations are also accepted. Chips for Kids Toy Drive, sponsored by the California Highway Patrol and the Bakersfield, Californian. 
corner for three. Count it. The Valley Rivalry is reborn as the CSUB Roadrunners host Fresno State. Saturday night at 7 at the Accardo Center. Join us for a pregame party at 5.30 with a family fun zone. Don't get sold out of the building. Buy your tickets now at valleytix.com or the Accardo Center box office all this week. CSUB men's basketball versus Fresno State. Saturday night at 7 at the Accardo Center. We're all runners. And welcome back into Roadrunner Rundown as we continue on the program. Still to come on the show, Brooke Hinkins joins us, CSUB Women's Basketball. Also, we'll have all the highlights and uh, news from this past weekend. More about CSUB uh, Volleyball and where they're going in the NCAA Tournament. We'll have reaction from the selection show, which was on Sunday at the Icardo Center. And, of course, highlights from uh, some other sports as well. Stuff we normally do at the beginning of the show. But today's a special edition of the program because coming up on December the 11th, and that's going to be next Thursday at the 5th, Fox Theater. We've got Easton Corbett in concert, and these gentlemen, they're opening up, and they are Truxton Mile. They're a local group, and they uh, played a great song, uh, You're Right, to kind of get the uh, show started. I realized, though, why you guys were playing. Now, you have, you know, guitars, great vocals. We could bust the banjo out for this second song. <laughs> I'm like the least cool That's guy right. in the studio right <laughs> nah, now. Nah. So I made sure that I brought proper, like, attire to kind of cool myself up for this go. for this uh, country music set. <laughs> I have my hat. By the way, I killed that pheasant. That's a pheasant right there. I killed that Is pheasant. Really? Yeah, uh -huh. I, ki I killed it in Idaho. Nice. And, uh, and <laughs> then I get my, I'll get my Waylon Jennings on, right, while you guys play your second song. There you go. So <laughs> now I feel like I fit in the in what's going yeah. on. All right. So what's song number two? What do we got? This song, this song's uh, called "Never Happened." Okay. Um, it's about the the girl that should have been, but did that wasn't. Oh, okay. It's, uh, the greatest thing that never happened to you. Uh, your, your last song was called You're Right. You said it's what you don't want to tell your, your significant other. I thought never happened was what you do want to tell them when they ask you questions. Yeah, mm. Never happened. Never no. happened. Nothing never happened. happened. Well, but now I we'll get go it with now. That. All right, here we go. Trucks to mile and never happened. Okay. Kiss. Cloud of dust is all you left While I'm left for playing little talks And making happy endings in my head well, You were mine for a moment When you hit this little town to catch your breath even though the only thing that's left to you is two lights, you made your mark. Cause my heart can't believe you left. How can I make you see? This is where you're supposed to be. You're the greatest thing that's never happened. a spark in your eyes Girl, the sparks can lead to fire One look could burn me up And one kiss can knock me down So turn around and turn me into ashes on the ground, yeah How can I make you see You should know Though you're tearing down that road Your heart never left my front door If meeting you is dumb luck Baby, ignorance is bliss if you look into that review, hope you're looking for a boy who gave a girl a reason to put her on in days to rest. And how can I make you see? Well, this is where you're supposed to be. You're the
Nicely done again. Nicely done again. Thank Thanks, you guys sir. very much. And once again, Trucks Tomorrow are going to be opening up for Easton Corbett on December the 11th at the Fox Theater. And uh, this was just the acoustic taste of the uh, the full version, which is coming up uh, on the 11th. And uh, good opportunity to uh, check them out. The show starts at 7.30. Uh, tickets available at valleyticks.com. Now, uh, people got a chance to hear you play a little bit. Um, talk about your musical influences. Who uh, who kind of uh. who kind of influences your sound? I, I read on you know I read online a little bit. They were saying a couple groups that I really uh, have have enjoyed for a long time. Just kind of recent got big. Uh, Eli Young Band, Whiskey Myers, oh, yeah. those type of guys. Those kind of mm-hmm. were yeah uh, yeah. Eli Young Band, um, huge influence. You know, coming from Red Dirt Circuit, the Texas. We kind of are looking at the formula that they put together. Yeah, about it's fantastic. Touring around. Yeah. You know, we want to do that with California. Um, uh, John Mayer, Keith Urban is a huge influence of ours, you know, and local artists like Monty Byram is a huge influence nice. of ours. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of Americana, great guitar player, uh, really Merle Haggard. Jamie. Yeah, uh, of course, Merle. Merle, yeah. Buck, 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 but was an amazing guitarist. Both, I mean, Merle and Buck were both amazing guitarists, so they're an influence of mine. Um, but, you, you know, the Eagles, I would say, is a huge influence. Of ours. Sweet. Eagles. If only, huh? if only we could play like. That. If only we were as good. If I was. As if good I can harmonize watch. like them. You Seriously, know, these guys yeah. can't carry tune in a bucket. But God bless yeah. them. Oh, I know. So there's, there's, there's a, a plethora of uh, different artists and nice. bands that we kind of just look at as like, okay, we need, we need to be as good as them. Was there a concert? Like, did you go to a concert growing up or something coming up, and then? You were at that show and you're like, all right, that's what I want to do. Like, oh, was there man. that one show maybe that? What was yours? What was I, I think I remember mine. That's a, that kind of sparked the light bulb. For well, me. you know what? I, I, before I even went to a concert, my, my grandpa was sitting in the, the living room yeah. with his guitar. I was like, I want to play guitar. <laughs> and then once you get the guitar, you're like, okay, well, I want to play for somebody. Yeah. And then once you play for one person, you're like, okay, well, now I, I want to, you know, show, but I want to play for a couple more people. <laughs> then you go right. see a concert, and you're like, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What was your concert? Um, I went to, and I had played guitar before this, and I was just dabbling it, but I went to a Brad Paisley concert. I think nice. it was one of That's the right. first ones that he did here in Bakersfield. Was it the Crystal Palace? No. no it, was, well, uh, it, it was It was Rabble Bank. Ra- I think it was I went when, with okay. Yeah, I think it was when he was with uh, Taylor Swift or something. It was okay. when she was still, you know, coming right, up. Right, right. And it, in hindsight, it's not that long time ago, but from a guitar player's perspective, when I saw him, I was yeah. just, okay. And country music especially, because sure. I, I used to not listen to country music. And I, I grew up on listening to it with my dad, but I was just like, I, I don't want to play country music. Right. I want to play blues. And and then I saw Brad Paisley, and it, it all changed. I was like, that guy's amazing. I saw Brad here when he before his debut album came out. Actually, he was we went to the it was a I think it was a Father's Day weekend. Went to Crystal Palace on a Saturday night, and you know we're going to see Buck and the Buckaroos, uh-huh. and you know they come up and they said, hey, we've got a young man who's touring the country right now, getting ready for his first uh, debut release. Um, He'd like to play, you know, Brett, and here's Brad Paisley. Yeah. So the guy goes up there and just kills it. And he actually played the fishing song, which he didn't release on his first album. It was his second album. But, uh, but you know, he killed it for about 45 minutes. And then he went and signed autographs in the in the lobby. Mm-hmm. My sister and I might have talked to him for about 45 minutes. Really? And I got signed pictures and stuff. And then as soon as that album dropped, he just blew up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And so it's one of those stories where you're like, I knew that guy before yeah. he was anything. <laughs> exactly. I have yet to meet him. I'd love to. And that, yeah. that's cool about the Crystal Palace, too. It's yeah. such a cool uh, venue to go to because you can see artists that Taylor right. Swift was there. How right. many uh, How many artists have done the same thing that you're talking sure. about Brad Paisley doing? All these guys. Lady Annabellum yeah. came through. Taylor Zach Swift. Brown band. Oh, Zach yeah. Brown did a free concert. Right, right. I know. Look at him now. Are you, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> like it's, 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 a, it's a really cool gym to have here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and uh, what a what what a, what a killer uh, killer sound you guys have as well. And, Thank you. Um, is there any was there any like old was there any old country music influences? Well, that's oh, oh man, yeah. Johnny Cash. I mean, that would yeah. Well, Johnny, I, I know every Johnny song in the world. <laughs> My grandpa, uh, big country music guy, and you know I grew up on Merle and and you know of course Buck uh, yeah. and then uh, Conway and you know all all the old names. Too. Sure. Even a little bit of Red, uh, Cousin Herb, like all these old albums, the nice. Hee Haw. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, that was my jam. When everybody else was watching Sesame Street, right. my grandpa had some VHS tapes of Hee Haw he'd put in. Nice. Yeah. I, I didn't know as a kid that it had been off the air for like 20 <laughs> years, but it was still so much fun. Buck, you thought Owens, it was Buck Owens, for sure. Right. I, I worked at Crystal Palace through college okay. and um, as a server there, and I got to see it all behind the scenes and got to kind of learn his story. I, he wasn't alive then, but I got to, you know, from hearing from people, you know, around town that work there and run KUZZ to see the story of how, you know, Buck came to be. It, yeah. It's just that guy, the work ethic, 
him as a musician, but his work ethic is what has inspired me a lot because the guy was just just worked his butt off. Yeah. yeah. And so you realize if you guys make it big, you got a great backstory uh, <laughs> coming from Taft, and then you work at the Crystal Palace yeah, as a we server. Both you both were. Well, I mean, what a great. <laughs> infiltrated. I hope you guys make it huge because then you're like, yeah, I was serving chicken fried steak while Buck was on stage, mm -hmm. right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that that's a great deal. Uh, it seems like you guys have a great stage presence too. You seem to play. Uh, all your shows seem to be great crowds and it looks like everyone's having a great time. Uh, stage presence, I mean, that's a big part of, of entertaining these days. Um, I mean, where did, where did that come from? That I mean, have is the toughest thing to do. <laughs> I had a problem with because I concentrate sometimes. I don't, you know, if you don't smile. But it's uh, the biggest thing that I've done, and Ryan and I have talked about it before, you're going up there to have fun. Yeah. So have fun. Right. I mean, just feel comfortable in your own skin. Right. So it, it's not like you're on display you're like some you know museum art piece you know right. you're up there having fun if you're not doing it for fun then why are you doing it sure right. exactly i mean i played music when well, i started playing music because it was fun and it made me want to tap my toes and i wanted to make someone else do the same thing yeah. so why be a stinking stiff on stage absolutely mm -hmm. no i i've uh i've always loved uh one of the few and you brought up the red dirt deal but my first exposure to that was years ago in college when when my buddy of mine my buddy of mine throws me a Pat Green CD. Oh yeah, and, uh, there you go. It was over. Like my country music life totally changed at yes. that point, and everything was Red Dirt Country from that for, point forward for me. I drove from San Diego to Austin, Texas to watch him play one oh, yeah. spring break, and then <laughs> then he started. You know, once he signed a bigger deal, he started sort of touring everywhere else. But you want to talk about stage presence? I mean, yeah. The yeah, guys, he came to the palace one time, and yeah. I was blown away. He, he opened here in town once, I think, and I don't think Bakersfield was ready for him. He opened for Gary Allen. Oh, so Gary he? Allen kind of has a different audience. Right. So he's doing opening, and he's just killing it on stage, but most of the audience was just kind of, they weren't sure. It wasn't like the normal type of country music, and it was mm -hmm. at the Fox, actually, and they kind of, they weren't start, quite sure, but I yeah. think it came through now, the way music's changed. Both unique yeah. guys. You got a California country <laughs> boy and then a Texas guy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now um, you, guys, uh, you guys have been together for... I mean, quite a while, right? Uh, high school? Well, yeah. So we, we've gone through, we, it started as a high school project, you know, senior year of 2007. And then um, we kind of were just dabbling around for a couple of years. And then we got a, another member. We really kind of started going kind of um, made it stick. professionally. Nice. So, yeah. um, and you're originally called Good Question as well? Originally, it was Good, Good Question. Question, yeah. Then we, we went to Nashville and we talked to some big to do's <laughs> over there. And they're like, dude, that's like a punk rock band name. <laughs> Not we, we picked that name out of the garage. Like, we were practicing literally right. in, our, in our friend's garage never thinking we were going to go anywhere besides like oh that's going to look cool on a banner in front of a bar <laughs> yeah. and then we decided to stick with it and then we're like well we had, now we have this stupid name <laughs> yeah so we had to relinquish that and uh, yeah. that was that was tough but uh yeah the good question name it always it, it'll always it's like a tattoo right you just can't cover up it's always going to be there right well good thing you didn't up. get a tattooed on you actually. oh thank god I, if i and i'm glad nobody mark. did either <laughs> yeah they would think you're the riddler yeah, yeah exactly uh well guys uh ryan and taylor truxton mile uh thanks so much for joining us in studio uh great job and again uh, folks this is the opening act for the uh, Easton Corbin show coming up December the 11th, benefiting the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. These guys are on stage first. Um, I, do you guys see anything cool as the opening act? I know, like, concert, you know, the big time acts get their contract writers and they get all kinds of cool stuff in the dressing room. Uh -huh. Do you guys get, like, a case of water and a stool to sit on or something? Or yeah, we, cool? like, we get, like, a little back room and uh, we get a place to put our instrument <laughs> yeah. cases. Yeah, maybe some boxes to sit on, you yeah. know, for some cushion. No, yeah. no, they're, they're really good to us, especially in Bakersfield. Nice. Yeah. The hospitality here is better than anywhere else. If you go to the palace, you know, they're like, like, oh, hey, yeah. we'll sit you down, get some we'll food. Feed you. Nice. Uh, you know, anywhere else here, the bars, everything. Like, this is the only, I don't want to give away the Bakersfield secret, but, right. you know, if, if you're a well known banner, if you're coming in, they're like, hey, we'll, we'll pay you up front. Nice. Or, you know, some some will make you work for the door, but, you know, it's either California, way, they'll treat but you right. It's like, it's like down home Southern. You right. Because, you know, in Nashville, right. those guys played for eight, nine hours a day. And they work solely for tips in wow. those bars. Wow. So if we walked into a Bakersfield bar and worked for tips, they, they're not used to that. Right. So they'd be like, oh, here's a buck. You know, we get like four <laughs> bucks between the five of us for three hours worth of music. There you go. Well, uh, it could be a Blues Brothers situation where then the end you throw your bar bill. You drink. You, you, drink, yeah. you drink over your how much you're paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you owe exactly. 100 bucks. You got to yeah. settle up. All right. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining thanks, us. Corey. Great job. And we'll, uh, we'll see you on December 11th. All Thank right. you. Thank you. All right. When we come back, folks, we'll get to some highlights and news. Brooke Hinkins still coming from CSUB Women's Basketball. That's coming up next. Stick around. We'll be right back. It's Roadrunner Rundown.
nuts about fixing that toilet upstairs? You know, I saw a plumbing episode on the Fix-It channel. Yeah, I can fix it. You could try it yourself, or you could just call Gunlax and save your marriage. Hey, honey, I think I did it! Gunlax. Gunlax, 327-3052. Wasn't so bad. We never done marketing. It seems to be a little intimidating. You don't know what's available. You think you're gonna sell your first child or it's gonna be really expensive to do. But Heather really described everything in a way that we knew exactly what we were doing. There was nothing, no questions about it. She was very clear. Um, I really, really enjoyed that that Heather took her time to get to know us as a family, get to know our business. From, any, from anyone that I do meet, I like to you know, get to know them. We knew exactly what we were getting into, but really the results of it was far more than we ever expected. Um, I think it brought us to the forefront of most people's mind. So they heard our name and then all of the videos and pictures, the Bakers to Life put a face to the name and they were able to connect that and know what our product was, but also know us as a family. Because of the Baker for California and because of Heather, generated so much buzz about our restaurant that we couldn't have done it alone. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to Truxton Mile joining us in studio. And uh, I should do that every week. We should have a band every week. It just makes the show just sound much more awesome. Uh, but uh, my thanks to those guys. They're opening December 11th for Easton Corbin, which benefits the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund at the Majestic Fox Theater. Tickets available at valleyticks.com. You can also get uh, – there's still sponsorship packages available as well, which includes uh, great seats, uh, pre-show pre VIP party at the Metro Gallery. Uh, contact Mark Mays at 654 3 Four seven three. That's six five four three four seven three. Great sponsor packages available for that, and uh, we'll see you on December eleventh at the Fox Theater. All right, it's time to get to uh, what we usually do at the beginning of the show. But we had tons of stuff going on with Trucks and Mile Studio. Let's go to the news. Let's start with uh, the CSUB volleyball program. They were uh, well Sunday. They were in the Icardo room, getting ready to find out who they would play in the NCAA tournament. Student athletes, coaches, they were nervous too. They're texting, checking their Twitter feeds, trying to find out where they're going to go. Finally, the big unveil. Uh, Kelsey Storage is good with fixing her hair, but uh, still nervous. And then finally, they got to the big unveil and who the runners would see. Number one, Stanford. Yep, the top seeded Cardinal. That's where the Roadrunners will be going. But still in the tournament. Well, Giovanni Mello and uh, some of the auto is messed up, but basically saying, hey, we're going to go, we're going to play, and uh, honored to be in this situation and represent the Western Athletic Conference against the top seeded Cardinal. That game will be uh, Friday at, uh, at 7 o'clock up at number one. That's number one tournament overall, Stanford, by the way. The Roadrunners uh, in, the, uh, in the field. It's technically the Ames, Iowa Regional, but uh, the Roadrunners will get number one Stanford in their first ever NCAA tournament game. So uh, definitely excited. Uh, 
they just they're like we talked about with Giovanna Mello before, playing with house money. So you go up there, you have fun, and see what happens. So that'll be happening uh, this Friday night, seven o'clock uh, in the uh, NCAA tournament. On to men's basketball, they were at home on Sunday hosting South Dakota, and early on it was Ali Ahmed getting himself established in the paint for CSUB. Runners had their offense rolling in the first half as well. Not only down in the post, but now Cortez Connors on the dribble pull up jumper. Bakersfield uh, doing uh, on a nice 9-0 run early, and then they uh, trailing though uh, briefly allowed the Cowdies back. So down by three, the runners once again going to double down to Ali Ahmed. Eight first half points for him. Good defense for the Roadrunners as well. Bakersfield uh, forcing eight first half turnovers. Here they contest the shot, and then they would get the rebound. This time uh, coming up the floor, it's going to be Deshaun Richmond on the defense for Bakersfield as they swing it back towards the near side as Richmond comes in on the help side, gets the steal and the outlet to uh, Ahmed. And you know what happens with defense? They say it creates offense. Richmond, other end, three-pointer. Bakersfield up uh, at the first half, up by 11. And uh, part of that due to, well, Ali Ahmed. Once again, off the paint, didn't have an answer for him. He'd be a big part of this game, though, for different reasons. 14 minutes ago in the second half, South Dakota shooting free throws. Ahmed whistling for goaltending right there. He doesn't like the call, so he's sort of, he's trying to make his case. He said it was off the cylinder, and he's making his case to the official. Doesn't like the call. And right here, he's going to smack the basketball. That's technical foul number one. And Ahmed, not happy about technical number one. His teammates try to quiet him down, but still talking. And then there you go, technical number two. Ahmed thrown out of the game, two technicals, and that would change everything for the Roadrunners at that point because then they couldn't make a shot from the field. They struggled from the mid-range as they shot just 29% in the second half. Even more from three-point range, they struggled as Richmond going to miss this one out here on the wing. The Roadrunners 0 of 7 in the half. South Dakota, meanwhile, without Big Ali in the middle, couldn't miss in the paint. Uh, the drive and the uh, score right here for the Coyotes as it will get the kind bounce. And once again, a uh, drive and finish with the left hand off the layup as Bakersfield just having trouble stopping South Dakota in the paint without the big presence of Ali Ahmed. Another one off the glass. And uh, that South Dakota going to come up off another Bakersfield miss. They take the lead. Then the runners miss the chance to take the lead back. And then here comes the dagger shot for the Coyotes. The three-pointer on the wing right here puts him up pretty much for good, but the runners have a chance to tie. Deshaun Richmond whistled for traveling right there with 32 seconds to play. And then South Dakota trying to inbound. The Roadrunners defending it well. They're going to get a five-second violation here. So they turn it back over to Bakersfield. Another chance to tie once again. Runners drawing something up, trying to figure out the game-tying basket here with less than 30 seconds to play. And I don't think this is what they drew up. Yeah, it's going to get by Kevin Mays. A turnover. Rod Barnes not happy there. The Roadrunners are going to go on to lose this one. You know, I thought we had a plan well. I had a game got uh, where we were and uh, let it slip away from us. But I don't know about the worst loss. They all had a uh, tough play for us. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, to get kicked out of the game, first of all, I think that may be the first time since I've been here to have a guy kicked out of the game. And uh, obviously that was tough for us because uh, he's a leader of our team. And, uh, he was playing pretty good. Well. You said they had no answer for him. Uh, but we've got to be smart in those situations, uh, understanding that uh, we can't win those battles. And, uh, Ali understands that he feels bad uh, not being able to play for us. You know, they're late in the second half. Uh, but it's uh, something that we got to learn from, uh, something where we got to have other guys step up. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, that costs us tonight. And, Hopefully that won't happen again. Um, with that play, you know, he, he's very passionate about the game, you know, so I can definitely understand why he would be upset like he was, you know. The refs kind of gave him a bad call, you know, but, but he's definitely controlling himself and he's going he's gonna to be back just like the rest of us. So the Roadrunners losing that one to South Dakota. Another close one, 68-66. The runners fall uh, to the Coyotes. And now Bakersfield will be back at home. The homestand continues. Tonight at 7, the runners host UC Riverside at the Icardo Center. And then on Saturday night, the big one, Fresno State in town. 7 o'clock, the start time. Tickets available for that game at valleyticks.com. It's also the uh, the daily deal right now with the Bakersfield Californian, bakersfield.com. You can find that for the rest of the week. 50% off the reserved seats for that game, our kind of cyber week special 
schedule. So the Roadrunner is hosting Fresno State on Saturday night as well as they conclude the four-game homestand. But uh, tickets available right now, valleyticks.com. Great discounted rates as well. The promo code, too, if you want to get them through Valley Ticks, beat Fresno on checkout and get half off your order, or you can get a 50% discount uh, reserve seats right now through uh, through the daily deal at uh, bakersfield.com and uh, also uh, through the Bakersfield Californian. So that, uh, that game coming up on Saturday, big one there. And uh, speaking of uh, good basketball, speaking of Fresno State, that's where the women's team was playing on Saturday, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the Roadrunners hosting Fresno State. Fans are pumped. Super fan is ready. And so was Greg McCall and his team. The runners putting it on Fresno State. And a balanced scoring effort for Bakersfield. Brooke Hinkins right there. You see her from the free throw line. She was hot from the outside. Hit her first six three-pointers. Couple free throws as well. Tyana Outland. Uh, she also got rolling too. A, a slow game the other night. Not the case here. Is Outland able to get one off the glass and go there. And then Outland once again tough underneath the basket with a right hand finish. And then Daisy Vines as well. She was the other Roadrunner superstar standout. She hits a free throw here. But then Vines in the transition with the nice fake and goes off the glass. She had eight. 18 points, but then Vines, uh, unfortunately, just kind of playing some defense right here, going to go down on her knee, and that's going to be it for Deji Vines holding her knee, which was already surgically repaired once. Doesn't look too good as she's helped off the court. Runners will find out more this week. Still manages, though, to finish the game on the bench as Bakersfield rolls 80-60 to in their first win over Fresno State in six tries. So how about that big win for the Roadrunners? Brooke Hinkins led the way with 19 points. Tana Outland, Deji Vines with 18 apiece. Vines combined with her career high on Wednesday night against Fresno Pacific was named Western Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Player of the Week as well. So the women's team rolling, and they will be at home as well this week. The Roadrunners hosting UC Riverside Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the Icardo Center. And then Saturday at 1 p.m., UC Riverside coming to town as the Roadrunners will host UC Riverside Saturday at 1 at the Icardo Center. So a big, big weekend for women's basketball uh, coming up as well, uh, or big week, I should say, coming off a big successful uh, week last week, and they are 4-1. and one. Speaking of women's basketball, we'll speak with Brooke Hinkins next. She had 19 points to lead Bakersfield over Fresno State. She joins us in studio as we conclude Roadrunner Rundown. We'll be back. This is dignity, the smile given to a sick child, the steps taken to find a cure, future leaders learning to make a difference, humanitarians who give from the heart, and a love that comes from above. At Mercy and Memorial Hospitals, dignity is more than just a word. It's who we are. Welcome everyone, Nissan of Bakersfield has everything for the perfect car buying experience. Like our beautiful showroom, full of the most popular Nissan models for you to explore. And our fully stocked parts and service department from everything from genuine Nissan accessories to factory trained service technicians to keep your car running its best. Plus, our massive inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles means you're guaranteed to find the right one for you. Nissan of Bakersfield is where you should buy your next car. Make the holidays brighter for disadvantaged and hospitalized children in Kern County. Join us Wednesday, December 3rd from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the Chips for Kids Toy Drive at the Bakersfield, Californian parking lot on the corner of H and 18th Streets in downtown Bakersfield. Donate unwrapped toys for ages 0 to 16. No time to shop? Cash donations are also accepted. Chips for Kids Toy Drive, sponsored by the California Highway Patrol and the Bakersfield, Californian. Join us for the 32nd annual Bakersfield Christmas Parade live on Bakersfield.com. See the bands, floats, and of course, Santa Claus. See the sights and hear the sounds of this wonderful Bakersfield tradition that will be streamed worldwide for the first time on Bakersfield.com. So sit down, relax, and enjoy 
the 32nd annual Bakersfield Christmas Parade on Thursday, December 4th at 6 p.m. only on Bakersfield.com, your Kern County live streaming leader. Air corner for three, count it. The Valley Rivalry is reborn as the CSUB Roadrunners host Fresno State Saturday night at 7 at the Accardo Center. Join us for a pregame party at 5.30 with a family fun zone. Don't get sold out of the building. Buy your tickets now at valleytix.com or the Accardo Center box office all this week. CSUB men's basketball versus Fresno State Saturday night at 7 at the Accardo Center. We're all runners. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to Truxton Mile for joining us in the first couple segments of the program. Again, tickets available for the Easton Corbin concert coming up December the 11th at the Fox Theater, a fundraiser for the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Truxton Mile, the opening act, they'll be uh, getting on stage about 7.30. Tickets available at Valley Ticks. You can also get uh, VIP sponsor packages are still available. Uh, call Mark Mays, 654 347 Three as uh, we continue on the program with uh, with a team that's had a great start to the year. They're four and one on the season, and that is CSUB women's basketball. And part of the reason why they're so good is uh, one of the reasons is Brooke Hinkins. She's here in studio. Fifteen points just to average to start out the first few games. Nice start to the year for you, huh? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a good start for your team in general. I mean, you go to Arizona, you split there. That was your mm -hmm. only loss was at Arizona State. You've played well at home. You guys yeah. destroyed Fresno State this past weekend. I mean, what is it about this year's team? We knew you'd be good, but you started out really hot. Uh, last year, being in the WAC, our first year, we all knew what it felt like to lose. So now <laughs> none of us want that feeling again. Yeah. So we all have the same goal in mind, and it's to win the WAC, and it's to go into every game – Knowing that we must win this game. Yeah. So. Well, and and you uh, as a as a guard, a shooting guard, uh, mostly a lot of a lot of stuff from the outside, shooting forty eight percent. I would think that by now people would learn. You need to guard Brooke Hinkins. <laughs> like they're not. You're you're getting open looks and knocking down three pointers. I mean, is it crazy that they're still leaving you open? Um. Not too crazy. I, it helps that my teammates know how to get me open and yeah. how to set screens and the plays that my coaches draw up for me and other teammates. They can't stop all five of us. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's it's difficult for other teams to guard us. So it feels good. I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I was gonna say. You guys have such a balanced attack. I mean, so much has been said about uh, obviously what what Tyler Outland mm -hmm. has done. And what she's expected to do this year, but when you have you know players like Daisy Vines adding a lot of points, yourself and Bada Bay, I know she's been injured a little bit, but you know she's averaging nearly ten a game. Mm -hmm. That's four players, fifteen, ten to fifteen points a game. That's a tough team to defend, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. And another thing that we have is we can go a little bit deeper on our bench for as far as subs, so we are fresher in the game and we can get breathers and breaks so that's also to our advantage too a little bit yeah and a lot of this team yourself included has been around for a while mm -hmm. you also have some new pieces and how are those and it seems like I was watching you play against Fresno State and as you mentioned going deep in the bench but those new pieces seem to just sort of fit right into everything you guys are doing yeah it took a lot of practice and a lot of break down the plays you know and just them jumping on board with us you know this is how we run our sets this is how we play basketball this is how we play defense and they caught on right away and it's obviously doing they're doing fine because yeah. we're winning <laughs> but um everything's going really really good right now so yeah. well that's always good to hear and yeah. you, you brought up um the, and we brought this up before on the show with some other players but this past year you know for the most part the entire team was in summer school and, yeah. and the NCAA allowed certain uh, certain hours uh, to to work with coaches and stuff like that so mm -hmm. I mean what this was the first year you guys had done that correct yeah this was our first summer school so where we had practice every day we had weights three times a week you know we were working hard just like we were during the school year and that benefited us a lot just because we have a little bit extra time we're not coming in the middle of September and starting season. And it just – we got to work on our own individual, like me, for instance, getting in, getting up more shots, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that really benefited us. So yeah. that was big for Cal State to allow us for summer school because that was our first year. Yeah. And it's obviously, per, like, helping. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, it is. <laughs> and it's – it's uh, and especially the NCAA opening up some of the summer hours as well to yeah. to let coaches uh, work with you and stuff like that. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely a big help. Now looking forward to this week, you've got a game on Wednesday against yes. uh, UC Irvine. Yes. And then on Saturday. Saturday against UC Riverside. So what's kind of, you know, wh wh what are you expecting this week in these two home games? Well, obviously we're wanting to win. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said earlier, we go into every game knowing that whoever is in front of us, they could be 
to ranked or not ranked, mm-hmm. we're going to go in and we're going to try our hard- hardest. We're going to be determined and we're going to be hungry and we're going to do whatever it takes for us to win as a team. So awesome. that's what it takes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and folks, if you haven't got a chance to either go out and see a game, if you're watching this program from out of Bakersfield, uh, tomorrow's game, uh, Wednesday night's game, will be available on the WAC Digital Network, uh, kind of the first exposure there. And then you guys go on the road, and uh, next week you're going to, uh, is, it, is it Nebraska? Yep, on my birthday. Yeah, so. there you go. Nothing says birthday like <laughs> Omaha. Um, but yeah, So you're going to go play at uh, both Nebraska Omaha and the University of Nebraska. Uh, that game is going to be on the Big Ten Network, so get a little TV time coming up uh, for, for your squad. And uh, you go into those, what's it like when you go into those big venues like, you know, Nebraska to play a game? I mean, you've, you did that just a couple weeks ago playing in the Pac-12. I mean, does it change your preparation or is it just another game? Um, honestly, it's just another game, but it it's a little bit sweeter because it's like, okay, they have something to lose. Yeah. We don't have anything to lose. So yeah. we're going in with all of our forces. You know, we're going doing everything we can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so hopefully, you know, we might give them a little bit of run for their money, but we'll see how it goes. What was it like at Arizona? I mean, this is a Pac-12 program and and you guys went in there. At one point we're up 20. Yeah. I know they had they made a run and made it close, but you guys still held on for the win. I mean, what was it like winning in that venue against a Pac-12 opponent? And did you have people like kind of looking looking at going, who are these? Who who is this team? Yeah, at first they were looking at us like, dang, how are they sticking with them? But once we got up by twenty, we knew that we were going to do that mm-hmm. to them, you know, because we went in there with a lot of heart and. Yeah. Like I said, nothing to lose. And when we play like that, like we have nothing to lose, we come out on top. And I think if we keep playing like that, we're going to do really well this season. Has it helped your your, your preparations? I know uh, when the WAC did their preseason polls, they selected you guys number one. And I was talking to Coach McCall, and I said, is that – a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I mean, sometimes teams take that as, uh, you know, they, they, they don't work as hard. I mean, have you now taken that as kind of a target on your back situation and worked harder to prove yeah. that they're, they're right? No, definitely. A definite target on our backs because now, for instance, we have something to lose as far as the wax. So now when we're out there, we're going to play like we're number one. If mm-hmm. people are saying that we're number one, we need to prove to them that we are number one and win and that's what we're doing. Yeah, so. no, so far, so far, it's uh, it started out. Now, uh, this is uh, your senior year, and uh, what's the? It's kind of been an up and down ride for you, but you guys uh, got you know into the NIT last year, mm-hmm. WNIT last year. Obviously, you tap t- uh, topping off with an NCAA tournament appearance would be great. But yeah. what's your uh, you know what's the run kind of been like here for you uh, in Bakersfield? Um, overall, it's been awesome. I love Bakersfield. This isn't my hometown, but it is somewhere that I will always come back and visit and. My four years here have been a great experience with basketball and school, so I have no complaints. How's the? Uh, you still a finance major? Yes. Is that uh, you? About ready to wrap that up? Yeah, I will be done in the spring. Nice. So my parents are actually really happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Not only do you have a great basketball experience, what do you? What are you maybe planning on after basketball? What's kind of maybe the thought with the degree and what you might want to do and that um, kind of stuff. Hopefully, I become a grad assistant somewhere. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to become a coach. Oh, cool. Um, but. Then again, I also want to get my master's, too, okay. just in case, you yeah. know. And if not, we'll see what happens. You better be nice to Coach McCall. He might oh, make yeah. you a grad assistant, right? <laughs> yeah, right? There you go. Uh, we, that, would, that would be great. And the finance thing is important, too, because, you know, you need to get team budgets in order. Yeah, right? So, you know, if you want to be a coach, <laughs> if you have a little finance background, yeah. that, won't, uh, that won't hurt. And, uh, and, and finally, uh, you guys look forward to – you got a few more non-conference games, but obviously second season in the WAC. What did you learn from season number one that you want to apply to season number two? Um, go into every game hungrier than the other team. Nice. Because if we go in there thinking, oh, we're just going to beat them or yeah. it's going to be an easy game, it's not. So, and every time that's we've done that, it's we've lost. So, yeah. we're just going to go in hungry. <laughs> Good lesson to have. All right, Brooke Hinkins here on Roadrunner Rundown. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, tomorrow night at 7 against uh, UC Irvine and Saturday at 1 against UC Riverside. Yep. See you at the Ed Carter Center. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brooke Thank Hinkins you. here on Roadrunner Rundown. We've got to wrap it up, folks. Uh, don't forget, you can get this show anytime online at GoRunners.com. Next week on the program, we will speak with uh, Athletic Director uh, Ziggy Siegfried will join us as we sort of recap the fall season. Uh, good uh, good run for a couple of Roadrunner squads, including uh, uh, Volleyball, who's going to be at the NCAA. Maybe they'll still be playing next week. That'd be awesome. They're at the NCAA tournament on Friday at uh, against number one Stanford. And uh, also, we'll talk with him about that. And uh, much, much more on the program as we get close to that December 
September 11th date as well, the Easton Corbin concert. Tickets available at valleyticks.com. Lots of stuff happening this weekend. Uh, go to valleyticks.com and get your tickets for women's basketball at home twice this week, men's basketball as well, including Saturday night's big showdown with Fresno State, 7 o'clock at the Icardo Center. That's also the daily deal right now at bakersfield.com and will be all week long. You can get those tickets for uh, half off and also at Valley Ticks. Use the promo code BEATFRESNO to get those uh, tickets discounted as well. Hey, thanks so much for joining us, folks. Thanks to Trucks and Mile for joining us in studio. Brooke Hickens as well. We will see you next week. This has been Roadrunner Rundown.